Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at capacitors. Uh, there's a bunch of different styles and uh, sizes of capacitors. This particular one right here will be used for maybe an indoor blower motor on an air handler, a fan coil, or a, uh, or a furnace. All right. um, these dual capacitors uh, that have three sets of terminals, that's called a dual capacitor. Those are normally for outdoor units uh, like heat pumps and, and outdoor condensers. Um, a real large one with a high MFD rating um, might be used for a compressor, um, specifically just for a compressor without another additional motor. Um, these black ones that look like this are usually start capacitors and they have a higher MFD rating. All right, um, the MFD rating is microfarads, all right, and that's measuring capacitance and uh, that's the amount of storage capacity it has in it for, for the voltage storage. All right, um, the black ones, which are start capacitors, usually have a higher uh, microfarad reading, and they're also usually hooked up to a relay of some sort uh, that would kick it out. Something like this uh, is a part of a hard start uh, um, system, hard, hard start capacitor system. Uh, and then you have another um, relay that looks like this, and that would be kicking the capacitor out just due to high amperage. All right, you have other ones that kick it out just due to high heat, and um, that's just there just to start the capacitor. These these particular capacitors usually stay in line with the permanent split capacitor motor. Um, they actually are needed for the motor to run. Okay, so you actually need this capacitor for the for the motor to start up, whether it's a comp compressor or it's a or it's a uh, a compressor or a blower motor. You're going to need these to stay in uh, line with the, the motor the whole time. This particular one's 15 UF. Uh, UF and MFD are the same thing. Um, UF is just an old uh, manufacturing lingo, but it still means microfarads. All right, so let's go ahead and test this one out. This one's a 15 UF, all right, and it's 370 VAC. All right, you can change out a... Uh, a 370 VAC with a 370 or a 440 VAC capacitor, uh, but you cannot change out a 440 VAC capacitor or V capacitor. Uh, you cannot change that out uh, with a 370. All right. So if uh, if we go ahead and just short out any remaining voltage on this capacitor, normally. Uh, capacitors like this that are hooked to motors or compressors, they're going to be draining most of the power off of them. Once you turn the power off to the compressor or the fan motor, it's still going to continue to run. It's going to draw most of the rest of the power off the uh, capacitor, but you're still going to need to short, that, short this out uh, in order to um, just get any remaining voltage off. After you do that, you can set your multimeter to microfarads, and then you can go ahead and either put alligator clamps on your multimeter and connect it like this, um, or you might want to dig in real, real nice and tight with, uh, with your probes in order to get a good accurate reading. You want to let it sit for a little bit, you know, 10 seconds or so, or 5 seconds, all right, and to get the proper reading. Right now we're reading 15.54, uh, all right, microfarads. So that is correct, okay? So that capacitor is within 5 or 6% of what it's supposed to have at 15 UF. All right, so once again, this one will be for uh, maybe a blower motor um, on an indoor unit, typically. All right, they could be uh, they could be three UF, five UF, uh, seven point five UF, ten UF, um, you know, fifteen, whatever. All right, uh, this little capacitor, this is usually found on an inducer motor. All right, this one actually says ten UF on it. All right, and so same thing um, when the inducer motor. Is power is not powered. It's going to continue to run and discharge most of the voltage off here, but you're still going to short it out. Okay. Um, some people like to put on a um, a 10 or 15 uh, thousand ohm resistor onto here to bleed them out. You know, it's not going to hurt it for the most part and on these um, residential light commercial uh, capacitors to just go ahead and short out the remaining voltage. It's no problem. All right. So 10 UF. All right, so we're going to go ahead and clip our meter onto this, all right, and we're going to give it a sec, and we're going to go ahead and check that capacitor. I will tell you that these inducer capacitors, they really don't go bad that often, all right. Uh, we have 10.53 UF, or MFD, so that one is good, all right, so... Um, 
let me just give you a for instance you're gonna run into some that are plastic like this um, if you ever see that you have some um, uh, oil coming down the side uh, that's actually that dielectric solution uh, that's inside of of these capacitors and that's a telltale sign that these are bad you might also see a mushroom uh, up like on the top here and that would be an indication of it being bad it would actually mushroom mushroom up all right where you're gonna see some some oil or dielectric solution you're gonna see that underneath of that okay um, so that would be a telltale sign that it's bad, but you should, you know, you can replace that at that point, but uh, normally you're going to go ahead and test them out. All right. This is a 440 VAC capacitor at 55 UF. Same thing. You're just going to go ahead and short it um, just like this. Obviously, the very first thing you're going to do when working on a condenser is you're going to shut the power off to it. Um, and then you can go ahead and pull uh, the, the tabs off of here. Okay. Just a spade, a spade terminal. I'm just going to have it just like this. And when you put the new speed terminals on, it's very important that you um, go ahead and maybe crimp these back down uh, snug again, uh, just in case they become a little loose, all right, before you put them back down onto the capacitors, the new ones, all right? So uh, that is 55 UF. We'll go ahead and test that one out. Let's see where we read on that. You can see this one's taken a little longer than the other ones. All right. The other thing is you want to have good contact. So I might go ahead and take these alligator clips off. This one is reading 55.4 UF. So that was good. All right. Now this becomes a little more interesting. All right. Um, you're going to take a capacitor off. Maybe the whole outside is rusted. All right. And hopefully you can just uh, read what the uh, capacitance should be, the micro and microfarads. You know, this one says five. Uh, Five slash three five, okay, UF. So that um, is going to have, it's going to be common, okay, to fan, okay. All right, so you're going to have common to fan, and that's going to be five. Common to herm, that's actually going to be thirty-five. All right. Um, it becomes harder when you get something that's rusty like this. You can't really see. So what you do is you take a little bit of steel wool on it. All right. And then you might be able to read and make out that herm where it says herm at. Okay. H-E-R-M. That means the compressor. All right. And then that one says fan. And this one just says C. Okay. You need to be able to see that in order to know where to put the wires at. Usually the C goes right to the contactor. It's usually a yellow wire. All right. And then you follow the, um, the fan wire to the fan on the top of the outdoor condenser or the heat pump. And then you follow the Herm wire to the compressor. All right. So uh, when we short these out, we're going to go from the C okay, to the fan like this okay and we are going to go from the herm to the c all right but it doesn't matter if you short them out you know if you just do it quickly like that it's no problem all right so i'm going to go ahead and take my my alligator clips off this time because i want to go ahead and dig in you know nice and hard on this All right, so this, these two are where I need to read at. See how the, the, um, the terminals there are actually pretty, um, pretty bad. Right. So we got 36.17. All right. Now we're going to get. So that's 36.17 is higher than 35, so that's good. Okay, we're gonna take our next reading. All right, so 5.23. If you notice, we I think we said 22 uh, microfarads at the very beginning. You got to give it a little time. That's the secret to it. All right, to get that accurate reading. So this capacitor is still good. All right. So this dual capacitor will be for an outdoor um, 
heat pump or an outdoor condenser where the um, the fan would be for the outdoor top fan and then the um, herm will be for the it's actually um, saying hermetically sealed compressor all right so that's for the compressor all right now these are star capacitors some of them actually have resistors built onto them the reason they have resistors is to bleed the voltage off of the capacitor when it's off all right um, because there's usually relays that what happens is that right when power comes to the compressor, it, it may need, the, well, it needs a start capacitor, all right? There's, there's certain capacitors, the way the windings are built on the inside of them, uh, that need a, um, a start capacitor, all right? But it, the second it turns on, it needs to kick this circuit out. Once it kicks it out, um, you don't have... You don't have like a motor continuing to run. Like even if you shut the power off, the motor will still run and kind of like discharge most of this voltage. Well, this one, it just kicks it out completely. All right, uh, and then it, and it, the compressor will still continue to run. All right, so that's why this resistor is in there to just bleed off the voltage. Okay, until the next time. So when it turns on, it's it doesn't still have voltage on it. But even with that resistor in place, you should still be able to read the microfarad reading. All right, this one says. Uh, 400 to 450 MFD. So let's go ahead and read that. I'll turn our light back on here. Sorry about that. Let me move my hand right across the screen here. All right. Give it a little time. All right, so we got it, 434 microfarads, okay? So you do not have to cut that resistor out, all right? Um, this is one that doesn't have a resistor on it, all right? So you definitely, definitely um, need to, um, you know, short that out before taking the microfarad reading. If you attach your probes onto that, you know, your, your reading is never going to be accurate, okay? Um, so just because this has a bleed resistor and, and this one doesn't, does not mean that you shouldn't uh, bleed it. Okay, you can't take a screwdriver across there. So in this case, you're just going to take alligator clips. You know, um, this was pre-shorted before I tested it, but um, I just wanted to show you what you do. Okay, so you can just um, short it like that. In this case, before I check this, I'm just going to go ahead and put my alligator clamps on, just like that. All right. All right. You rub them a little bit or whatever just to make sure you're making good contact all right this one says 88 to 108 mft and we'll go ahead and check this one out so you just got to give it a little time that's all all right, 45.3. 45.3 um, is not 88 to 108 MFD, all right? So either we we didn't give it enough time <coughs> or this uh, capacitor is bad. Yep, this capacitor is bad. This start capacitor is bad. All right, so that's how you do it. Check us out next time, AC Service Tech.